Okay, and thank you for tuning in to this edition of my Tesla timeout series, where today I'm installing another accessory for my Model 3. This is from a company that I installed my last accessory from. It's teslasy.com. A uh, great company. Again, they've been great to deal with. They sent me this 7-inch uh, uh, rear display for the Model 3 UI, which I'll show you in a sec. Disclaimer, they sent that to me for free. I did have to pay for some customs duties and some taxes on that myself, but they did ship that to me, and uh, today I'm going to install it. Now, I've been thinking about getting a rear display for quite some time for allowing rear passengers to control such things as uh, the amount of air coming through the vents or the seat heaters, the rear seat heaters, of course, and then for longer road trips to use it as an entertainment device if should they choose so. So this was a nice one that they sent me. It's one of their uh, upgraded ones. It's a version two of it, of the product. But again, I wanna thank them and let me get right into the, the review and the install. All right, so this is the product. It's the Model 3 Y air conditioning control and multimedia system. There's lots of these rear displays out there. Many of them sell very similar products. They'll name them differently, but you'll see by visually looking at them that they're different products. So you'll need to read that particular one that you're, if you're interested in this. This is the seven inch display. And I like this one because it has the bigger vents than what you were seeing in the new Model 3 and the Highland Model 3, and also in the S and the X systems today. Um, so this still retains a uh, good size vent, which is something that's nice to have in the rear uh, seats of the Model 3 and Y, yet gives you that 7-inch display with multimedia and controls entertainment systems. Um, so if I flip this box over, <clears throat> it will show you what it supports. Uh, it can obviously support the HVAC, the seat heating. It gives you a seat belt reminder as well for the rear seat passengers, actually for all passengers, so that's nice. You can stream music and play USB music and video from it via either streaming or via uh, the uh, sticks. Um, you can, uh, this one I don't believe supports uh, any cellular SIM cards, uh, but you can connect it to your mobile, of course, for, for browsing. It's, it's running an Android system and it's a touchscreen interface. It has this air purifier and I've seen these on other ones. I don't really think, I don't know what it does. I don't know if it actually has some sort of extra filtration system in it. I don't think so, but whatever. And it's Bluetooth capable. And one of the things that got me on this one was that it will allow for not only connectivity to the vehicle so that the rear passengers can change the songs and increase the volume of, of what's playing in the vehicle itself, which could be good or could be annoying depending on what seat you're in but it also allows you to connect the Bluetooth headphones and Bluetooth devices to this, and then you can stream music or video to that. And that's important because if somebody in the back seat wants to put a Bluetooth headset on and watch a movie while we're in a long drive or listen to their own music uh, through this interface, if they choose to, they can do that, usually more for movies and that kind of stuff on a nice bigger screen. So this is nothing here is mission critical for me. I really want this for the seat heating controls and the fan controls for the rear seats. Uh, the seatbelt reminder is a nice safety thing. Everything else is a luxury, not really a nice, a have to have, but a very nice to have for certain situations. So let me open the box to show you what it looks like. All right, so I've opened the box up, as you can see here, and there's a couple boxes inside. One is the cabling system connectors here, which also come with a nice uh, plastic uh, removal tool so that you can uh, peel back the plastic from the um, uh, from the rear console, get that out, and has, of course, your one cable harness and your secondary cable harness, and they actually even provide, oh, that's a surprise, a nice USB-C to USB-A adapter, or the other way around. Well, that's pretty cool. I didn't, didn't expect that. And I'll show you what these cables mean, but again, I think one of the things I liked about this is it's a very simple install. It's a non-destructive install. You don't have to take out any components from the original HVAC system in the rear, like the USB port cards, uh, uh, electronics and the fans, the actual, because that can be a hassle. And you, I've seen some videos where you have to cut pieces and, you know, they make it sound easy. And if you're okay with it, great. But I wanted something that was easy, non-destructive, and that would do the job. And of course, uh, the vent stuff. So let me take this screen out of the box. So here's the screen, as you can see, the vents. It's got a USB-A and uh, two USB-A ports here. Uh, some models also show a USB-C. So this one doesn't have the third port. Uh, but it does have two ports. One, the one on the left, is for data. So if you use a, a, a stick or uh, something like that, and the other one will charge. And that's one of the reasons as well, which I also like this, is it has a couple little speakers. So it has front-facing speakers versus some that have speakers underneath. And if you wanted to, you can actually listen to stuff through that if you wanted to. 
So that's something that you can do. And of course, Bluetooth, it's got a mic. Uh, I'm not sure why, I guess if you wanna maybe make a call, it does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you could do that from the back seat if you wanted to. And then it has a reset button. So a nice screen. And then if we look at the, the rear side of this screen, again, nothing that you have to take out. All your wiring is here, your vent are here. So again, you know, they, they talk about this um, air filtration stuff. I don't see anything through. This is just an open plastic vent that goes through it. So I don't know where that's coming from. I, I would not believe that this is going to do any, add any extra filtration at all, unless I'm missing something, but it's pretty straightforward. And then some of the cabling on where you hook up, but you'll see that the cables go into certain uh, positions and they only go one way. So it's pretty easy to actually cable this up. So another thing that I liked about this, and again, it's a seven inch screen. Uh, this is their version two product. And again, I'll have links and everything in the show notes um, for this. So let me start the install. All right, so for the installation, what I've first done is I've moved both the front and uh, driver and passenger seat all the way forward and all the way up, uh, certainly the passenger side as far as it'll go. So I've done that. Now I'm going to shut the power off. It's, again, it's one of those things you don't necessarily have to, but it's always advisory and it only takes a second. So let's do that here. And we can do it from the back seat. Move my light out of the way for a sec here. So you don't want to be sitting in the front seat when you do that because it has the front sensor. So when you do that, it will, got my tilt screen, of course, it will sensor and not shut off. So you want to go to service, I believe, and or safety, one of these. Where is it here? Power off and hit power off. All right, and that's powered off. So as long as I don't touch I have the doors open, the windows open, as you can see everywhere. As long as I don't touch any controls, it won't activate the power until I'm ready, until I actually install this, then the power will come back on. So that's the first thing to do. Now, the second thing to do is take this part off. And have you seen by multiple videos, it's pretty easy to take off. So let me show you how. All right, so let me do this without hopefully knocking the camera over. So basically, um, this just basically pulls out. And there's a couple of things. I'm gonna start with the top and then I'm gonna pull out the bottom and show you that. But with the top, you just basically grab it from the sides and you just pull and it will come out just like that. It's got four clips and just like that, out it comes. Pretty straightforward. There's the plug here for the USBs and the AC controls. I can get that in frame here that you just unclip. And it's again, one way to unclip it. It's a safety clip, lift up and pull at the same time and it will come out and that's it. It's unconnected. It's really not much to this mechanism, right? Again, there's no filtration. The only thing that the OEM one gives you is uh, moving slots here. So from left to right uh, and up and down uh, in the front slot. So that's something that this gives you, which this other one and, and most of the replacement ones are fixed uh, veins on this. So you can't really go left and right or up and down, but they're basically uh, generally structured to put air towards the passengers in a, in a kind of a mid-level uh, fashion. So that's pretty good. But otherwise, there's not much else here other than the USB, uh, which is under here, this card. And that's why when you're, if you're having to take this stuff, this USB stuff out and put in another one and take this and reuse it, there's things you have to cut. And it, it's complex, it's not that hard, but it is complicated. And for a lot of people that don't really wanna do that, that amount of effort, wanna keep it clean, simple, and really OEM factory, this is a nice option, this seven inch one. So now I'm gonna undo the bottom part. All right, try to get an angle that works here with some light for you. So it's basically this bottom piece that you're going to take out. And these, these tools are great for doing that. Basically starting on one top corner and putting it in there or in the top back, this, it should pop out really easy. As you can see, there's not much force required and then run your way around it and off it comes. It's got five clips that hold it. Pretty straightforward to, uh, to take out. Now, one thing I already have is a, another OBD connector because I'm running the um, event uh, screen there where I have my miles, uh, my speed control, my turn signals, so a little mini, what they call mini HUD displays. There's nothing HUD about them. They're basically tucked into the vent and you can watch uh, a previous video, which I can put the link in here if you need to see that. I've got watch all my Tesla timeout series for a lot of the different accessories that I've done to this, which is pretty, pretty cool. But so I've already got one in here. Now, the one thing that you can do is you can daisy chain them. What that means is I can add another accessory to this. 
I don't have to take that accessory out and not use it. I can actually add another one. And so I've read some people and, and listened to some videos from some other Tesla owner folks that have put up to four or five different devices daisy chained on this. So I'm just adding a second one. So there's no problem in doing that. So what I have to do since normally you would unplug the clip from here, push and pull, but because I have something already in, I'm going to just add it to, actually I probably will do that. I'll, uh, I'll add it to the first one here. So just pull, push that tab in like that and then give it a pull. If I can get to the tab easy enough, sometimes it just takes a little bit, a bit of getting in there and with the right connections, I don't have nails. So just like that, push the tab in, pull that out and it's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the connector for here, here, and then now some people are saying run it up through this right side and it'll come out the top here. Or there's two torque screws and you can pop this bottom piece out uh, to even make the install even easier if you can't find a, an opportunity to fish this out. So I'm going to try, I'm probably going to take this off. Let me, I'm going to try fishing it up first because I might try storing some of the extra stuff up here. I don't think I have enough room. So that's the only challenge, but I do have this cavity that I can start tucking things into and working its way. There's lots of room back here. So I should be able to tuck this so that I can uh, tuck the original one and then get this back so that I can uh, put that cover back on. That was my only concern, but I do have lots of room. Some model, some model threes have a panel here. They don't have this open space. So you have to check what your has, but certainly for doing one accessory, it's not a problem for two. You've got another ribbon cable, right? Kind of uh, going on here. So. I will hook that up and then let's see how that looks like. Okay, so here's the ribbon cable that comes with it. Just unfolded it. It's got a couple of connectors at the end. And what you wanna do is you wanna run this up here so it comes out, comes out into here. So you'll be able to connect things up to it. So I need to connect this ribbon cable. So first I'm gonna run it up now. Most of the videos that I've seen have said, try running it up through the right side here. That's got a little bit of a wider space, I guess, to it. And once you start pushing it up and feeding it up there, it should work its way up into the housing where you can grab it with the other hand and latch onto it. So I'm going to try doing that. Get the first part, there we go. Okay, and then I get the second part. So now you can kind of see, I fish it through the driver's side of this. It's a little wider than I guess the passenger side because of these cables and it comes up underneath here. You can fish it up. Let me get my camera and show you what that looks like. All right, so here you can see what it looks like. Fished up underneath the vent. So this is the vent and it comes up underneath here on this right side, as you can see. And get the nice camera shots you can see. So everything, so easy to fish up. And then I'll just pull up some of the excess. And then what I'll do afterwards is I'm gonna connect this cable up, that cable up to the harness and tuck everything back in and put this, um, uh, actually before I connect that up yeah, and put put it up and then put the cover back on. So I'm not going to film all that, but you can imagine what you have to do. I'm going to connect this cable up. It only goes in one way. So they're, they're notched and they're clicked so that they only go in one way. And then I'm going to continue feeding the rest of this cable up to pull up the slack and put that rear cover back on there. All right. So one thing I've decided to do is I forgot that I'm going to run the seat control because this also could control the front passenger seat moving up and down and reclining back and forth. So I'm going to need to run that cable. So I'm going to need to take this thing off so I can run the cable a little nicer there rather than trying to fish it down because it is a separate cable. So I'm going to um, take this off and then run that cable and see how it looks. And to take this bottom part off, it's just torque screws. And these are torque number T20s. So it's a T20 screwdriver, two T20 bolts. Undo that and then just pull this part pull this part straight down and it will come out that way you can get access to all this. So it'll be a little easier to work with. All right, so that piece is off, six clips holding it. As you can see underneath here, uh, the outer housing for the HVAC. So now I can, this is the cable that I ran up, so probably easier just to take that out and run it up rather than fishing like I did, but here's something you can do. So now I have a bit more room to run the other cable down for the seat control and then put that, that cap and the cover back on. But it's plugged in, so before I do that, I'm going to run the cable, put this middle part back on, and then plug in the seven inch display to make sure it comes on. All right, so the cable I'm talking about is this cable. It's the second cable that comes with the kit. There's, um, you just unfold it. There's a single end here. This will go to the central control. 
And this one that has the two ends, this is the pigtail version that's going to tie into the existing seat controller and then let you uh, control the seats. So this is the part that's going to go over to the front passenger seat. And then this is the part that's going to stay here. So I'm going to fish that all. And then I'm going to start to put the covers back on. Um, and before I plug anything, I'll put the seven inch display on. All right, so if we look at the wiring, I've got the, that panel back on. So this is the one for the seat control. Here's the original one that we took off. And then here's the new one. So we have the two container uh, connectors. This green one's going to go to that green one. And then the other one going to go to the display. Let me double check that. All right, so I've connected the green ones together, right? This is the one I took out. I pulled out from the OEM one. This is the connector here. And as you can see, there's two connectors coming out of this one. One's going to be for the original OEM one up top. This small one is going to be for this one. And uh, I believe I'm going to double check it. No, actually it's this one because you can see the multiple colors and it only goes in one way. This one is, this one here is not used. It's not used. It's there for something else. So it's going to use this connector and this connector to hook them back up to this connector and to the original OEM one. So let me plug that in. All right, try to do this without knocking the, the camera down. So I've connected these wires up together and the last one to connect is this one to the OEM plug that's here. So when we do that, I'm going to shove some of this wiring down here, connect it up, and then I'm going to install this by just clipping it in place. Once I tuck in all these wires here so I don't have anything crimped or uh, blocked by this, and I'm gonna put it on, just cut, basically just pops right in there like the existing one. So again, I've already done this one. The only one that's left is this one here to be connected. This one, if I can get it on camera. This one to be connected to this OEM one. But I'm gonna do that as I shove all these cables in. So it's hard to do and try to film at the same time. So I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So just before I plug it in, you can see that these are notched. They, uh, it's only one way that these connectors can go in on all of them. So it's pretty easy. Just take your time. Don't try to force it if it doesn't feel like it's right. They'll line up and snap in nice and easy if you have it correctly. So again, you have a notch on this one that feeds into this release and pretty straightforward. All right, so I've plugged it in, fished all the cables down, plugged it in and uh, then turned the power on back in the car. And as you can see, the screen lights up. If I peel off this protective display, there we go. So it's obviously reading data correctly here. It's telling me that all my doors are open, which they are. Um, and then it has the various controls here, which I'll walk through in a bit. But the good thing is um, this is set to Celsius. There's a way, that I think, with the newer updates that you can change it, but I'm in Canada, so we're Celsius. But it's mimicking basically the front screen information because it's connected to the OBD port. The fan is off. So I'll go through the controls after. I just want to finish the installation by running that cable to the seat and show you where that plugs in. It's pretty straightforward. There's a little uh, nut, a screw up there that's hard to get to. So I'm going to try to see if I can get to it and uh, pull that out. But at least this is working, so that's a good sign. I just want to show you fishing this cable for the front um, to control the passenger seat. You can see I have it coming out of here yet. I haven't fully closed this in because I'm going to tuck it in here. There's a gap underneath the seat here on the front uh, under this bar that you'll feel with your finger. So if you run this down through the side and then run it in under this channel, it'll fish through nice and easy, easy as you can see there. And then you can fish everything up any way you want to the to the front seat where you're going to get to the side controls, which are over there, uh, as you know, on the side of the seat. And then plug in this, uh, daisy, this um, pigtail uh, cable to connect up to it. So let me do that. So here's the front passenger seat. What do we want to do is we want to get in here and where there's a connector, as you can see down there. And we want to be able to pigtail into that connector where the cable is there. So some people have just pulled back on this and pulled the cable out and tucked it in. I'm going to try to take this piece out because it basically just pulls a bit, but there's a screw here at the front. And if you can undo this screw, this piece comes back a lot easier and it's a little bit more room to play with. So I'm going to try to do that. Now, this is where the screw is located. So here's where the screw is located. I'm looking upside down underneath the seat. And as you can see, this screw right here at the tip of my finger, that's the one you have to get to to take this plastic piece off to pull down. It's a tight fit. You have to put all the seat forward so you can get as much uh, leverage in there. I don't even know if I have a screwdriver that small. I believe it's a Torx bit. So I have to look to see if I can find one. If not, I'm going to try it the manual way uh, by not taking it off. I'm going to try to see if I can get this off first and uh, make it easier to install. 
So to show you, got a ratchet set under here with a T20, a short ratchet, and I'm just unscrewing it here, as you can see. So it just takes some finagling any way you think you can get this, but you do need something short, not more than, I would say, three inches, um, because it'll be hard to get to. But uh, this is what the screw that you want to unloosen. So now that I've got that screw out, I'm going to, it's easier to pull this. Let me get a little water shot, as you can see. You just this this just pulls out nice and easy. That's where that screw goes in, and then you have much more room to get to that cable plug. That's the one you want to get to right down there to fish the uh, other ones up, connect it, and then put this back together. So let me do that. All right, so once you have it pulled out, as you can see here, I've fished it through. It takes a little bit of time to try to find it. Maybe use a rope or a cord or a piece of string that you can flush, push through here to find where the cable is and then pull it up. That's what I did. I actually used one of these uh, fishing line things that I have from a previous install. And then again, once you have it uh, hooked up here, get some light on that. I'm going to plug one end of the pigtail into the existing wire and the other end into the um, harness into the actual power control model, which is over here. If you zoom in on it, you should be able to see it. It's a little dark, but that's the plug that I'm going to get to and uh, do that. So let me do that. All right, so everything's plugged in. Ran the cord underneath there, plugged it in. It's just nice and neat and just tidied everything up. So it's uh, turned the car on and of course everything is working. Both my front display, which I daisy chained. Um, again, the one on the Speedo that I have there. So that's that other plug that you saw for the mini HUD, as they call it. There's, a disc there's the display, and then here's the main display. So let's check out some of the functions quickly here. Try to get the light a little bit better for you. It's a nice screen, a screen touch screen. Uh, it's showing, of course, um, the fans going. Now, in order for this to work, you actually have to rear, have the rear fan turned on. I have the temperature control turned off, so I'll turn that on in a moment. But before I get to that, we'll just look at some of the options here. I won't go through all the options because there's a lot, but basically this is your home screen. When you touch home, you get this. You have your fan lock if you want to keep it at a certain speed, dog mode, camping mode, which you can turn on, and that kind of stuff. And now I probably can't get out of that. That's the purification. I think it does absolutely nothing, so I wouldn't even bother with it. That'll be to turn on the AC if you want. Again, I have to start it first from the front, though, before any of these will work. And then just some uh, circulations here, uh, EQS. It automatic quality, I guess, is what they recommend leaving it at. I don't know. Let's see. You have your music tracks. This is your degrees for the internal temperature. Um, and again, once I turn it on, it'll sync up to the front. Uh, battery, uh, if you want to see the battery state, you can here. It doesn't really do anything for the rear passengers and the outside temps, of course, which is nice. Back button and then some uh, different screen buttons. Uh, it's not showing anything else here. Uh, if I had some profile or screen set up. Um, so that's that. Again, there's the seatbelt showing that I'm sitting in the back seat. It's detecting me, but I don't have my seatbelt on, which is correct. And it will uh, show you that when you get in. This is the passenger front seat controls, so I can move it back. As you can see, it's moving back here. Move it forward, and then recline if I get back here. And go forward. So really mess up somebody if they're in the front seat, but this is more so like Uber drivers and things like that. People that maybe put kids uh, car seats in the back, they wanna be able to move it up. Uh, without going around to the front, whatever, you know, somebody gets in, hey, can you, I can, can I move the seat up a little bit? Sure. So it's a nice thing to have. I'm going to kind of put it back to where it usually is normally for this vehicle, and I'll do that, but at least it works. Nice control to have. You have your fan controls here. Again, I'll come back to that when I turn it on from the front. You have your seat heaters. This is really nice for rear passengers to be able to do this. You can turn on all the rear seats, and then, of course, toggle between, as they call it, the bacon here, whatever. I don't know, toggle between that, or if they're all on, you can just simply say all close and turn them off. That's a great feature. In fact, I'm going to turn that on just to make sure it's working, but it should be. You have your music, so uh, I don't have anything on here. I believe it comes with a demo type of song. Let me just see here. Pictures, no thumbnail, no SD card, nothing. So now it doesn't come with anything, I guess, but that's your music controls. If you were to plug something in video again, if you're going to plug in a USB stick, um, show them a floppy drive. That's funny. I like to haven't seen one of those icons for a while, different input methods for that. And then of course your volume 
up and down for the music that's playing at the front. Right now I don't have any media sources connected and the music is off, but that would be able to control that. Now, if I wanted to connect the Bluetooth, I would have to go into certain settings um, here, and this is where you get to the settings screens. So you can get to Bluetooth connections, Chrome. You can do some web browsing. Now, again, this does not have built-in Wi-Fi. This does not have built-in cellular capabilities. It does not have SIM capabilities either. So you would have to tether this to a phone. You cannot tether to the Tesla uh, cellular network. It's a private network. So either you're, cell you're connected this to a hotspot uh, if you're at home or somewhere where there is a hotspot, let's say a charging station that has Wi-Fi, you can do that. Or most people will tether it to their phone, hotspot their phone, and then be able to surf, do things like surf the internet and that kind of stuff. So uh, probably I'm not going to sign in, but I don't even think it'll work because uh, there's no address. Even if I type something in, let me say I haven't connected this to anything. Let's see, will it come up? No, not, no internet. So of course there's no internet here, so it's not going to work. Let me shut this light off. I think it might be too bright for you. So, so still on this screen, you can, Disney Plus uh, equalizer for sound, some file management. If you have USB sticks, video, YouTube, again, anything that needs the web will need to connect to something. Just to let you know, the seat heater is working fine because I can feel it burning my butt here. So I'm going to go and shut that off. Here's the seat heaters. I'm going to close that. Ooh, it's getting warm already. So, uh, so again, these are some other apps. I believe it has con uh, connectivity to the Play Store. So you could actually, if you have internet connectivity, go in there and download some apps if you want to, games, that kind of stuff. Whatever you have on your Google, this using an Android operating system. Now, it does say in the description that this is a fingerprint. Um, it's got a finger a coating to resist fingerprints, but as you can see already, I've got fingerprints. So it's you're going to have to, <coughs> excuse me, deal with fingerprints. I may end up getting some sort of matte protector for this and just cut it to shape and put it on a piece of matte film like I have in the front. I might do that eventually, but it's not a big deal. I can just get a quick uh, cloth to wipe it all down, but it does show fingerprints and I'm kind of dirty with, I've been working in the car here, so maybe that's why. But again, this is your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you want to connect, I have to connect my phone first with the, the device. Um, so I would have to Bluetooth or I could use a cable to connect my phone as well and do wired mirroring, as you can see here. So a couple different options uh, if I wanted to do that, um, that I have to um, do it. And then all kinds of settings um, on here, um, depending on, I don't even know what these are. I'm going to um, see what happens on these next time. Uh, you can do updates, check about updates, device info, all that kind of stuff. So the updates are nice. Um, if you're connected to the internet again, if you connect this to a hotspot, then you can get different uh, um, uh, updates. And here's device info for information for that. So I'm, this is the app to connect CarPlay. I'm not going to do it right now. Just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, and that's that. Um, that's about it. There's, you know, apparently this, uh, let's see if this Netflix actually works. It may not actually even do anything because they don't have, we cannot detect. Okay, so I'll have to check, connect this to the network. So let me let me do that. Um, and then these will, uh, or let me, uh, I won't bother doing it at this point, but you go into settings. This is where you'll go in to check your settings. You go brightness mode, auto means it'll go to whatever the screen mode is. If it's night, day or auto, it'll automatically switch between the two because you have your day, then you have your night mode, which darkens it by half and uh, something like that. You have your network if you want you so i can know open wi-fi i can uh, connect to wi-fi and i'll probably do this i don't know what flight mode is and then some factory settings uh, which i'm not going to deal with here and then some more settings and this is where you would get to hot spotting uh, and that kind of stuff um, if you're going to hotspot and tethering off uh, airplane mode things like that and then do different things so you can play with some of these settings as well, if you want to connect this to the vehicle, you would follow the Bluetooth connections and connect this up to the vehicle for that um, and go from there. So pretty straightforward. That's kind of a rundown on it. So I'm not gonna go through a lot of the functionality. Um, now let me turn the HVAC on and see how that works. All right, so I've turned on the HVAC. As you can see the temperature's there. I haven't put the media on. Um, and now I can feel the air coming through. So it comes through at about this angle here towards this vehicle, passenger and about this angle here. So you can kind of feel it when you're sitting in the seat in the middle. These are fixed angles, you can't move them. If I want to put the temper the fan up, I slide that over and it increases the fan display. But remember, it does it for everybody, as you can hear. 
So this will control the same thing in the front. There's no separate controls. It's either on or off for the rear if you do that. So you have to remember that particular part. Here's this air thing. I don't know if it's going to make a difference at all. So I would probably not even worry about that or this purification thing. I don't think it does anything to be honest with you. So just kind of there. But those are the modes. Um, so it's nice to be able to control the fan. Do that down, move it down here a little bit more. And then if I want to put the air conditioning on, I can from here. And this is where I would get the heat from. And I have the temperatures here. And then it will, uh, it's supposed to sync up to the front there with this on. And then with this off, of course, um, it runs on its own there. But again, it has to be set up front for the rear on in order for this to work. Yeah, now I turned it off, turned it on, and it's working. So looks like everything's working okay. It's got a small little blip here with this app that just doesn't want to get rid of. This is that pairing app for the phone. I don't know why it keeps wanting to do that because, oh, may, oh floating, that's probably why I put that on there. Okay. Yeah, that turtled off. That was my fault. Okay. Kept annoying me. So anyway, that's the brief functions. Uh, you know, I, you can get it for what your reasons are. Again, charging a data port and charging port reset mic button. Uh, very, very nice install. Easy. Couple of speakers. Um, I'll probably maybe set up a USB stick and just see if it plays some music from it, but it should, in all intents and purposes, do that. I think I'm done the installation. It looks good. Let me tell you, let me give you a wrap up on this. Well, again, just showing you what it looks like from the outside. It's nice. OEM display and when the car shuts off it shuts off as well so it does not drain the battery and um, cause any issues there so looks like the Highland Model 3 just a slightly different output on it but very nice having those separate controls and multimedia functionality and again you can go on the website and look at more information from tesla sy.com these guys have been great um, so that's what it looks like let me tell you my thoughts oh and just see Close the door, it shuts off. So it's uh, it's off. All right, just to wrap up this video, thanks for watching. Um, just to, uh, some points here. This is a great unit for rear passengers to control, primarily the seat heating and HVAC controls. Those are kind of the two main things that we get asked, that rear passengers will ask a lot about. So I think it's a great, great unit for that. Plus, of course, you've got music streaming, you've got uh, video watching, all this kind of stuff, depending on how you hooked up. You can put USB sticks and play multimedia from that. So it's a nice little device to preoccupy people in the back seat, especially for a longer road trip. So it's got some use there uh, even with external its own built-in external speakers which aren't going to rock the house down they're okay but certainly you want to use something else for listening to it i wanted to just preface that you know uh, or uh, emphasize that the install is really easy because this is non-destructive uh, don't need to cut or take any pieces out it's really easy the video is long because I went really, you know, step by step on the install to try to explain things. But once you do it, it's really about a 10 or a 15 minute install. But, and that's one thing I liked about this product and the products that are similar to this that follow the same type of uh, hardware installation where you don't need to cut and swap pieces out with the existing OEM rear vent controls that are there. So that's important for that. It's got that nice OEM look and feel. It's got a nice interface, which looks Tesla-like. It's got nice fonts. Uh, the, the screen is decent. Good Good resolution all that kind of stuff the controls are easy to use so i do like that it has that oem feel the vents are nice and big so you've got a, a good airflow there are some units that have smaller slit type vents on them which are you know sometimes they impact airflow this doesn't really impact the airflow much and also the rear footwell ear uh, airflow is not impacted at all it still functions as normal through the front hvac so um uh, this uh uh, that isn't impacted at all. So that's one thing that uh, some people don't don't notice or don't realize. So uh, it doesn't change any of the normal uh, heating and cooling ventilation flows for the HVAC system. So that's important. Uh, as I mentioned, you can daisy chain multiple devices into that OBD connector. So that's good to have. So you could, if you want, if you already have an accessory, you can add more. I mentioned the front passenger control. You don't have to install that if you don't want to. It doesn't impact the unit. It just, all those functions won't work. That's all. 
Um, it's nice that this unit has Netflix and Disney Plus installed. Some of the older units had some issues with getting Netflix and some other apps installed. You needed to, to go on the uh, manufacturer's websites or, or the uh, company that's selling that websites and download some patches or download some fixes for it, which you could do, just a little bit more cumbersome. So having this built in and already operational is nice. Uh, but And of course you have Google Store on there so you can go to uh, and download Google uh, other apps like games and that kind of stuff if you want, which is cool. One of the other main features, uh, as I mentioned, was the Bluetooth connectivity. So if somebody in the backseat wanted to listen and watch something privately, they could do that through Bluetooth speakers or Bluetooth headphones, excuse me, or, or speaker if you want to, but certainly Bluetooth headphones. Uh, which is nice. Now, my understanding is that this uh, these units will only allow you to connect one Bluetooth headphone at a time. So it's not like you can have two Bluetooth headphones connected and listening at the same time to the same. So if you have two kids trying to watch a movie, that doesn't work, but one for sure. Now, you should be able to, however, connect a Bluetooth game controller to this at the same time as a headphone. So that will and that should work because I've seen some videos on other systems where it works. So it should work for this. I haven't tried it. Uh, but that's something that should work as well. So somebody could listen and play a game with a Bluetooth controller, listen with Bluetooth headsets and, and use that uh, rear display for that. Um, I mentioned it connects to Wi-Fi, so you'd have to hotspot or find a Wi-Fi wi wi connectivity, but it does connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, some vehicles, of course, have, like some of the GM vehicles under this, have built-in Wi-Fi hotspot capabilities. You have to subscribe to that. Uh, Tesla does not, so you would have to use something on your own. Um, and one other question that get, gets asked a lot, especially with accessories that plug into things, is does it void the warranty? And the main answer is no. The device itself and the accessories don't void the, the warranty of theirs. An act in the U.S. called the uh, um, a Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. And basically it's a whole legal thing that says that the uh, OEMs can't really uh, not cover warranty issues uh, if you install aftermarket accessories. Now in saying that, if you cross wires or short something or do something during the install, or it's determined that that uh, item that you installed actually impacted a part or something on the vehicle, then the OEM may not uh, warranty whatever the fix is. So it's, it's, a, it's not a gray area because the act is there to protect consumers to allow you to do things. Uh, but obviously, if you damage something while you're installing, if you install it improperly or something, um, it could um, uh, not be covered if there was something that needed to be fixed, in this case on my Model 3. Now, as you saw, these things just tap into the OBD connector. So they're not really, uh, they're pretty harmless installs. So unless there's wiring that's screwed up in that connector, and I haven't seen or heard anybody that's had problems in you know, frying the screen or anything like that uh, with these kind of items. You know, there's always that degree of risk, I'll be honest with you. I can't say it's 100% guaranteed, but it's extremely minimal because all these accessories just tap into existing connectors. That's what these pigtails and things like that are for. And just to utilize controls or, or pull information and allow you to, to, mod to control things through another interface. That's really what they do. So something like this is pretty harmless from an install perspective. So. Just again, I wanna thank um, teslasy.com for sending me this. It's a really nice unit. They have a couple of, you know, they have a few different kinds of units and sizes. There's 7.2, there's eight inch, there's seven inch, a couple versions of the seven inch. So look in their website for their products. This one is more reasonably priced. I think it's at 300 US or something like that on their site. You'll have to check it out and look. Um, others can go four or $500. So it really depends on what you want to spend. There's a discount code you can use to get some uh, percentage off. So please use this code that's on the screen. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not a part of any affiliate or anything. So I don't get anything for these. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that are doing tons of reviews and get money on this. I don't, uh, pretty well everything that I review, I just review either I get sent for free or I get a discount or a combination of, uh, you know, something like that. I'll have to pay for some of it, uh, depending on what the case is, but I don't make any money on these YouTube products that I promote. So, um, I just wanted to be clear on that. So I'm just doing this because I like the product and I, you know, I like the company that I'm dealing with and they've been really good at supporting me and communicating with me and sending me this stuff and I'm even following up. So, uh, teslasy.com shouts out, shout out to them. Even the shipping, I think I got it within a week, which is pretty fast coming right from China. So that's super fast to be honest with you. Uh, a week to not even two weeks. 
So again, thank you to them. Thanks for watching this Tesla timeout. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I will try to answer them. Or you can always email me and I'll try to answer them. But again, everybody stay safe. And until the next episode, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye. Don't tell that hard and I fly Central hero shining silver beetle